everybody and welcome to Rotary. Today is April 7th and our guest speaker is Ms. Deb Barnett of SIU Innovation Labs. I want to thank you for taking time out of your busy day to spend it with your Rotary family and I want to thank Jerry Malumby for being our greeter today. Uh, Carl Flowers, is Carl with us yet? His wife's here with us but Carl's not quite with us but it's time for the pledge. So if everybody could please rise and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United, the United States, States of America, America. and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, nation under God, under God indivisible, with liberty and justice, justice for all. For all. <clears throat> Thank you. Our moment of reflection today is offered by Rotarian Shane. Gail kind of stole my thunder. You know, we had such a beautiful weekend. Uh, it reminded me of a part of the Winnie the Pooh that yesterday is history. Tomorrow is a mystery, but today is a gift. That's why we call it the present. So every day should be treated like it's the best day of our lives. So keep that in mind as we move forward. He was a wise old bear stuffed with fluff. Thank you, Shane. Today's song time is happy birthday. It's the first of the month of April. So we're gonna wish a happy birthday to all of our fellow Rotarians. Who, who do we have that's got an April birthday? Me, Christine. Christine's got, a, got an April birthday. Anybody else? All right, well, if you could all please join me in wishing Christine and any other Rotarians a happy birthday. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, Rotarians. Happy birthday to you. All right. Jerry Malumby, would you please introduce our guests today? Well, I scanned our um, gallery and our seems like our only guest is Deb Barnett, who will be presenting to us from the uh, research park. All right. Thank you, Jerry. Time for club announcements. Our centennial event is May 1st, 2021. Uh, please register for that event. Um, it is a free event, but we would like everybody to register so we make sure that everybody has the correct links um, and that uh, we can all have a good time there. So, um, Additionally, our 100 Little Things project is underway. Um, we have lots of projects going on currently. The Gunlock donations, if anybody has Gunlocks or would like to support that project, please contact Sharon Lorenskis. Cindy Buys with 100 Flowers, Sharon Harris Johnson with 100 Flashlights. Um, we're also in need of a champion for 100 plates, cups, knives, forks for the Carbondale Warming Center. So they're in need of those uh, disposable type items for, for coffee and for their meals each week. So if anybody's willing to support that project, please let me know and we can get you added to that additional project. Uh, Cindy or Sharon or uh, or Sharon, do you guys have any updates on the projects that you've been working on? Sharon, I saw your hand go up. There you go. Yeah, I uh, my my little mouse isn't squeaking right today. Um, yes, I think we have fifty, and with Mike Harris, my nephew, matching us, I think we're at a hundred. But he wants to keep going for about a week. Okay. And see if we can maybe even get 200 and then Dennis and I picked out a really nice um, kind of a Rubbermaid container and it's got handles and stuff and we're, we'll just donate that to the warming center whenever we take over the flashlights and batteries so it's going very well thank you thank you everyone awesome. Shane brought a whole bunch over so we we're we're doing quite well All right, looks like we have Cindy Buys is willing to be the collection point person for paper goods for the warming center. 
Yeah. Uh, bring them to the law school or her home or contact her to pick them up. Um, so thank you, Cindy, for, for taking the lead on that one. A couple more people joining in here. But for the complete list, please go to rotaryofcarbondale.org backslash centennial. Um, hang on here, I've got somebody else that just sent me a message. Um, a couple more people here joining in. And Ella did 154 plates and cups to the warming center on Saturday. So Ella's already helping us out there. Thank you, Ella. All right. Uh, our lunch sponsorship project um, continuing on. We are, we are continuing to support the Heartland Catering and the warming center with this lunch sponsorship project. So I want to thank everybody for their continued contributions to that. Um, I don't have today's menu uh, yet, but uh, we'll be sure to update everybody once we get that. But usually the first of the month, they do birthday cake. Um, we are doing our spring Adopt-A-Spot cleanup on May 8th. We'll meet at 9 a.m. at the Warming Center, or at the Warming Center, at the Superblock. Um, Shane and Jerry and Pam and I helped out last time. And, uh, and Shane's wife came out and helped us as well. So we had our masks on and our vests and walking up and down the block there. Uh, on the, the stretch right in front of the super block. So we picked up five bags full of trash and I, I was counting and lost count at about 850 for my bag. So um, please come help us out. There's plenty of trash for us to clean up, especially as it gets warmer and the you know, snow melted, but that doesn't mean people picked up everything that was around there. So we need all hands on deck if we can, uh, 9 a.m. on Saturday the 8th to help out with that cleanup. Our foundation donation challenge, matching club donations up to $100. Christine McGuire, I want to say thank you to you for, um, for putting that forward for the month of April. We've got Shane in May, Faith in June, Jerry July, I've got August, and Gil has September. So we'll see if we can continue that on. It's been, uh, it's been going on for about a, a little over a year now, I think. We've had our $100 a month club donation match. Uh, some district news, uh, satellite club update. We're now at nine members, three more added or plan to be added in the near future. They did submit a grant proposal. Um, actually, I see Brooke is on the call here. Brooke, do you want to talk about these items? I'll take a sip of water and you can go ahead and chat. No, you pretty much summed it up. Um, yeah, we did submit a district grant for a backpack project for um, a local grade school here. And um, we are working on our committees right now. Awesome. Um, I'll go back a notch here to the spring cleanup. Uh, I just saw a note about uh, the bags and whatnot. So um, keep Carbondale beautiful. I believe we borrowed the pickers for everyone for that. Um, they have the, the pickers set up there. I recommend bringing some gloves if you have some, some work gloves or some disposable gloves if you, if you need those. Um, those are helpful. Um, the orange bags are provided by the city and then the city picks those up as well. So um, you don't need to bring bags, but uh, I brought my own high visibility vest just so I had that out there. So you have one of those, it doesn't hurt, but wear your rotary t-shirt. Let, let people know we're here and uh, we're helping out. going through this. Um, we do want to welcome the newest Rotary Club to the district. Um, the chartering event was held on Saturday, April 3rd. East St. Louis Rotary Club uh, did, a, did a charter meeting and um, broadcast that live. So that was fantastic. I'm really glad they were able to do that. Shane, how many members did they get in that initial club to, to just start that? Uh, let me double check real quick while I'm, I'm on the district website. They they went from zero to a charter club in less than 90 days, and they chartered with 32 people. Wow. So they, they grew a club of 32 people in 90 days and chartered. They got their, they received their official charter on Saturday. So, you know, a 
membership can grow just that quick when, when the right spark is there. And the photo on the left is their club president, Christina Anderson. Uh, on behalf of the Rotary Club of Carbondale and the Satellite Club, I did send them a cash gift of $100 and did send them some safety vests because one of their first projects is a, is a beautification project to pick up trash in and around the school district. So our club did donate. So if you do watch the video that there is a link on the district's website, you'll see uh, President, the district governor-elect Terry Mathias giving that gift to, to them in behalf of both our club and the Satellite Club. Thank you. Thank you, Shane. Mm -hmm. And I know that the, the Innovative Clubs Project um, at the district level and uh, the district membership committee have been working hard to continue to, to get these sparks going and, and to fan the flame and grow Rotary throughout the region. So thank you, Shane, and every other member of the district for helping to kick that off. New Rotary Year starts July 1st of 2021. Uh, officer training is underway for the 2021-2022 Rotary Year. The incoming district governor is Mr. Terry Mathias of the Jackson Williamson County Sunset Club. And he at one point in time was a member of our club. Um, also have our incoming officers, our incoming club president, Jerry Malumbi and president-elect Faith Miller. Some Rotary International news. Uh, the 2021-2022 theme is serve to change lives. Uh, April is maternal and child health month. So anything we can do to continue to support those causes. Um, well, Faith, is that is that a reaction to the photo of you there? For the president-elect, it still hasn't really sunk in. I, was gonna say, I think it's the same photo you have on your screen right now. I, I know, but it's uh, it's it's the it's the president-elect piece that's <laughs> still a year away. You're okay. <laughs> uh, Rotary International Wild Polio Virus Weekly Update. Um, Two children paralyzed by polio in 2021 versus 140 in 2020. So uh, we are doing great work here um, and, and vaccines work. The fight to end polio is proof of that. So encourage everybody to get your vaccines locally if you haven't already. Um, Awesome. And I just got a message for the foundation donation challenge for somebody to take October. So I'll shoot you a message on that chain. Uh, now it's time for some of your good news. So other than somebody taking that foundation donation challenge for October, who's got some good news to share? I'll start Rick, if that's okay. Of course. Uh, the Rotary Satellite Club in, in Murfreesboro hopefully will be adding two new Rotarians by the end of April, so we will be submitting those to the, the Carbondale Rotary Club board for consideration, and if the board reviews them, uh, the full club will get to vote on actually adding two new members into the Satellite Club, so I think that's some good news to celebrate. Awesome. Thank you, Shane. Well, yesterday I was a uh, an election judge, and I saw Faith there as well, and other people that I know. Um, and it was very seldom on my board, but yesterday was a very boring thirteen hours. We had all of for our our area or for our group, we had all of fifty four people voting. So um, it was very low, very low turnout. We figured one one voter per person working the tables per hour between the two tables. I concur. It was pretty quiet in precincts nine and twenty six. We had uh, between the two precincts, it was a total of uh, one sixty two somewhere in there, and I overheard one of the clerks saying that one district had no voters. Well, I live yeah, Faith, I was the same way. I was at, I went, I live in the West Frankfurt district. I went to vote at 7 a.m. Polls opened at 6 and I was the first person to vote in our district. Mm -hmm. 
we had the opposite in Macanda yesterday. I did see Rick and I saw Linda Meredith and um, I, I, I hope I didn't leave anyone out. But uh, four years ago, there had been 135 and uh, yesterday we had 209. And uh, that's a pretty small uh, precinct, precinct three, which is pretty much out in the country. So we were very excited to see people coming. I think uh, what warmed my heart, and I put something on Facebook about it, is the cooperation between um, the judges of both parties and how well everyone just got along and we laughed and talked all day. And it was like old home week. People came in and they hadn't seen each other for the last year. Everybody was wearing masks. Uh, there were no problem. We, well, a slight one problem got upset with the uh, county clerk and kind of, but it, it, you know, it was just something that happened. And um, I, I, as I said, he was probably having a bad day, but he left and everything. I, I, it was just, it really kind of renewed my faith uh, in the American voting system. It was really a nice day. Uh, my good news for the week is that uh, we were able to go see grandparents this weekend and uh, do an Easter egg hunt with, with grandparents in the morning on Easter morning was fantastic. Um, we also had an opportunity to go to our first wedding in the last year. One of my wife's childhood friends got married um, and it was an outdoor ceremony and a, a meal in a barn. So it was, you know, big spread out tables and um, overall it was just it was amazing to get back to some sense of normalcy and um, to see to see a couple that was truly happy with one another um, you could see that they were meant to be and they, they would not have met if it weren't for COVID so um, COVID brought them together and forced them to have a very quick courtship and spend a lot of time together once they decided they were going to be in a bubble together um, so that was, that was a nice thing. And, you know, so COVID did something good with the world. So, uh, but we, we had a great time wearing our masks and spread out and all that. And it was fun. Well, I have a COVID related in that I've been conscientious about wearing a mask for a year and didn't get a flu or cold or anything for a full year. And then I let my guard down on Sunday. We went to my wife's family. There must have been 17 of all 17 people of all generations. Monday, I had a raging cold. <laughs> so, so that's back to normal. <laughs> that's not such good news, though, Jerry. <laughs> Okay, I really don't know. Anybody got some good news to follow that one? We can end this end this section on a high note. <laughs> so my parents were able to get their first vaccines last week. Uh, they've been putting it off because they don't get out much and they're in their upper 80s. And then last night, my son that's in Omaha in college told me he has got his first one scheduled for Saturday. So that's my good news. Good news. Awesome. Thank you, Brad. Go back to the go back to the slides here. Um, Sergeant at Arms. Uh, since Will is not with us when we're online, Gail White. Well, Christine, you're the big winner today with your birthday celebration. So you know the club's tradition when when our birthdays roll around. Uh, this is also the first first uh, meeting of the month, so that catches all of us um, for a contribution. And if any of um, those attending today failed to vote yesterday, then uh, please uh, chip in a little bit extra for your failure to do your civic duty. Oh. Thank you, Gail. Now it's time for our guest speaker. Uh, Deb Barnett, I'm going to stop my share and uh, allow you to do so. Uh, where did she go? There it is. I will. It's not wanting to let me make you a co-host here. There it is. 
your name is different than it starts with SIU, so I couldn't find it. Um, <clears throat> I changed it on you. Yeah. Shane, it does not want to let me make her a co host. Can you do that for me so we can, uh, so she can share her screen? <coughs> Okay, you should have it now. All right. Yes, I do have cap uh, capability of doing that. But first, I just wanted to say, wow, what a great group um, you all are. And I see a few familiar faces in the group, but a lot of new faces to me also. So hopefully, uh, we'll have an opportunity to get to know each other in this few minutes and, and develop some new um, friendships and opportunities to uh, collaborate. So. I appreciate all the great work all of you are doing and, and that you shared there, Rick. And of course, also want to thank uh, Linda Flowers for inviting me to come today. So we uh, worked on some innovation related activities last year uh, with Linda. And so I, I assume this is uh, this invitation is part of uh, an extension of her experience last year. So first, I want to ask all of you a question, though. Um, how And I ask this question, whether I'm talking with students or other community groups. So how many of you have actually been to uh, the research park here at SIU? See some hands, Cindy? Oh, several. Okay. Good. So that is uh, not as common as we would like, actually. We kind of feel like it's, it's almost a best kept secret that we're trying to get the word out about more, even though we've been here for gosh, 30 years um, as far as the incubator building goes. So um, I'm glad to know that all of you have, have been over here and hopefully you'll come back soon and see us again. So um, Linda just asked that I would share about some innovation related activities that we've been involved with and things that I think um, some of you might have interest in. So I'll do that today, but feel free to um, unmute and ask questions as we go along if you have them or type it in the chat, whatever you feel most comfortable with. So as, um, as Rick mentioned, I'm Deb Barnett. I'm here at the SIU Research Park and I'm the Associate Director of the Research Park and also the Director of the Business Incubator, incubator Programs. So and I'll talk about that a little bit more in just, just a second. So again, most of you have been here, so that's wonderful. Um, the research park, it's the primary innovation and technology space in the southern third of Illinois. And OIED, which stands for the Office of Innovation and Economic Development, um, it was established in 1990 with the building, uh, actually that's right here behind me in, in my, my background, but also at the bottom left of your screen. It's the Dunn Richmond Economic Development Center, but um, I know I remember when it was built and I always just called it the incubator and I think a lot of people know it as that. Um, but that serves as the primary business and community development outreach arm for the university. <clears throat> so you may or may not know that the research park is made up of several buildings, four in total. Um, we have 43 acres. Here, we're right across from the um, Van Terra Center, the arena uh, there at SIU, kind of sitting up on top of the hill. So this is an aerial view that you see. And then of course, Dunn Richmond is at the top. We also have one enterprise place to the south of Dunn Richmond, and then one innovation place, which is to the east. Um, it's, uh, it was built in 2012. Um, most of you, again, are probably familiar with the incubator space. It is a 55,000 square foot mixed use facility, which means we have office space, we have warehouse and light manufacturing space, and we also have um, wet lab space. I don't know if any of you watch The Voice um, on TV. Um, I watch it occasionally, and while they are selecting their teams, when their team when they've selected all that they need, they say, my team is full. And so I put this on the screen as well. Believe it or not, the incubator, um, we are full. Uh, it is the first time in 30 years that this has happened um, in the existence of the building. And so you would think that during COVID, things would have really slowed down, but that was not the case for us. If anything, uh, things really ramped up here 
uh, people were looking to start new businesses. They were looking to even expand some businesses. Um, some folks had had ideas for years and COVID kind of provided them an opportunity to explore those ideas and some time to do that. So our office space is full. We do have two wet labs still available, um, but we're very excited um, about that. This is just uh, an image of some of the companies that are in the incubator. Um, we have anywhere from startup companies um, in the incubator. And then once they graduate from the incubator, many of them graduate either into one of our other buildings in the research park or out into the, the community, which is what we want. We want them to um, kind of spread their wings and fly and, and grow into our communities, which creates more jobs. Um, economic development, all of those things. That, that's our goal. We also have some companies or organizations that are research or university connected. And then we have some support organizations there as well. I did highlight that the Small Business Development Center, which many of you might be familiar with, um, they were also an organization here that grew substantially um, last year. So in a typical year, they serve about 300 business clients throughout the region. Um, last year, they served nearly 700. So we were very, very busy, not only helping folks uh, with new ideas and new business starts, but also, of course, helping businesses navigate all of the COVID relief funding and, and all of those programs that were available to try to keep businesses afloat. Uh, during the shutdown and beyond. And we're still working with businesses um, related to that. Finally, we also offer um, a co-working membership. So this is for folks who don't necessarily need a dedicated office space, um, but they just need a place to come and have reliable internet, which sometimes is hard to find. And um, maybe just an innovative community and actual people to be around instead of just working from home. So this is for new startup companies um, and others that don't need an office space, as I said, but it's also what we found um, to be a really good option for remote workers, again, who might need a reliable um, internet access and then also access to people. I think uh, working from home has been great for a lot of people, but I think a lot of folks are also looking to get back and, and be around others again, so. Um, that membership is only $150 a quarter, so basically 50 bucks a month. And we do have a new member three for one. So basically you get three months for the price of one, so $50 just to start. If you know anyone that can use that service, um, feel free to send them our way. A couple of companies I wanted to highlight, uh, speaking of innovation focused activities. So 40 Below Joe is a company here in the incubator. Many of you might be familiar with um, Kurt Jones, who founded uh, Dip and Dots. He's a graduate of SIU, and he is also the founder of 40 Below Joe. And it's the same sort of frozen beaded product that Dip and Dots is, but it's with coffees and creamers. And so they do all of their manufacturing out of Dun Richmond, um, all of their production, shipping, everything is right here. So um, that's a real uh, point of pride and something that we always mention, not only in presentations, but when folks come by for um, tours and that sort of thing. Another that I wanted to point out is a fairly new company within the last couple of years, um, and it's called Levy Lock, <clears throat> excuse me. And two of its founders are also SIU graduates, and they have a product that is specifically or started as um, a use for pollution control and levy remediation. What they have found is this product also can be used for buildings and other structures because it is um, pretty much indestructible. So windproof, fireproof, all of those kinds of things. And um, they have been issued four patents within the past year. Um, they also participated in a pitch competition through the Air Force, and they were in the top 20 innovative solutions for, <clears throat> for resilient buildings. And so I bring that up because those are innovations that are happening here at the research park every single day. And I don't know that we always do a great job of getting those stories out there, 
Um, but any chance we get, we want to um, let folks know uh, what's happening here. Um, this is the program that Linda is very familiar with. Uh, we also hosted a program called Innovation, where innovation and entrepreneurship collide. Um, we offered three of these programs last year, uh, started the first one last spring, uh, in, started in February, I want to say, and then of course in March is when COVID hit and the shutdown happened and we moved everything to a Zoom platform exactly like what we're doing right now. Um, we continue to offer another one in the summer and then in the fall. And there were 60 of these awards for this program through the SBA Growth Accelerator Fund um, that were awarded last year. Of course, we were one of them. There were only two awarded in Illinois, um, the Research Park and the U of I Enterprise Works. And um, our target audience uh, for this particular program was women. So certainly we accepted anyone into the program, but we were really targeting uh, or trying to get the word out to women um, who had innovative ideas and, and so we could help them move those forward. So we had 53 participants actually complete the program last year and 50% of those were women. So we were very, very proud of that. Um, it was a, a diverse group as well. So um, almost 60% uh, were either Black, African-American, Asian, or uh, Hispanic, Latino. So we were also very proud of that in reaching out um, to populations that uh, many times we haven't maybe done a good job of reaching in the past or haven't participated as fully in our program. So we were very um, excited about that. And then finally, um, one of the, the purposes of the program was to also familiarize folks with a program called SBIR or STTR. So SBIR is Small Business Innovation Research. And these are grants that are awarded to small businesses. So the small business has to be the applicant. And there are 11 different federal agencies um, that award uh, these SBIR funds. So they don't take any equity from the business. These are awards um, to advance um, early stage ideas. Typically there is a phase one grant of up to $250,000. And then if, if the idea or the development goes on to phase two, it could be upwards of a million dollars. So this is a, another area that we're really trying to expand into the region. Um, over the past five years, I have this on my wall over here, as sort of a motivator for me. Um, over the past five years, there have been more than 3,000 SBIR awards in Illinois, totaling nearly $1 billion, but zero have come to the Southern Illinois region. So we are looking to change that. And the Innovation Program is, is part of how we're trying to do that. So I mentioned we had three programs last last year and we have another one coming again this summer. So again, if, if you know folks that have those innovative ideas or a small business um, that's looking to um, possibly take advantage of these SBIR opportunities, we would love to talk with them. And then just a couple uh, final things here, of course, our innovation focus programs also focus around investing in the next generation. So um, one of the things that we do is uh, work with students right here on campus through our Saluki Entrepreneur Corps. Uh, they do a number of things. Um, the picture in the top right is an innovation day that they held last March. This was actually the last event that we held before um, the shutdown happened and we had a great group there. Um, they also have a, a pitch competition every fall. And last year uh, we had three winners. Our first placed winner was Danica White. Um, he is a mechanical engineering student here at SIU. Our second place was MD Jawad Sadiq. Uh, he is a computer science graduate student here at SIU. And then our crowd favorite was uh, Asma Glaswani. And she was a graduate student in energy science. Uh, and management. So that's always that's always a lot of fun. And then I also wanted to highlight, of course, Nick Skogard here on the call will be very familiar with this because he is the facilitator 
for Jackson CEO, but we also invest heavily in the next generation through our high school students. Um, we, any way we can support them, we will do that. We hosted their banker day last week, which was really exciting. And just Nick does such a great job uh, with this group of students. They were really, really impressive. And so we not only provide space for you know, them to have their events or trade shows or whatever they might need, but we also provide mentoring and support and uh, business assistance through the Small Business Development Center. So uh, that is just a, a very quick overview of some of the innovation focused activities that, that we do and um, wanna open it up for any questions you might have. Other than that, again, I appreciate you all inviting us to come share today. So any questions? Go ahead, Cindy. Thanks so much for that overview, Deb. I'm wondering if you're doing your event that you did last March, again this year, but doing it virtually. Yes, so um, last year, again, we started the one in March in person and then moved it to virtual. Then we had a summer and a fall program and they were all virtual. So this summer, uh, we will have another program. Uh, it will start in July. And most likely, at least what we're planning now is to offer a hybrid option. So folks who do wanna come and meet in person, they can, but we will also stream it through Zoom at the same time. And all of that information will be on the Research Park uh, website, which is just researchpark.siu.edu. I have a question, Deb. What's a wet lab? <laughs> That's a great question. So um, a wet lab has a number of things in it that will allow you to do any sort of chemical um, experiments, anything like that. So there's the, the, sh the shower piece in there. There's a, a hood, um, a vent and hood in there. There's, there's all kinds of equipment. We do have uh, one of our companies here, Saffron Scientific, um, rents one of our wet labs, and they just talked about the thousands and thousands of dollars that it would have taken to equip a lab in the way they, they needed it. And they were basically able to step right in and it was fully equipped and ready to go. They certainly did add some of their own specialized equipment, um, but um, it's, it's quite a deal for the area, so. Any other questions? Hopefully so, you learned Deb, something do you new. keep tabs on the companies that become large enough that they move out? Yes, I couldn't see who was talking there. I'm sorry, but um, yes. So we Deb, do. Do you keep tabs on the companies that move out? Yes, we do try to keep tabs on the companies that have moved out. However, I will tell you that we haven't probably done as good a job of that as as we could. So this year, we're actually working with one of our student groups, uh, ARC, which is Applied Research Consultants. And we're going to be doing a study of, of all of our former tenants um, so that we can have a comprehensive report and sort of a new starting point. And that will be, we'd hope to do it last year as part of our 30 year anniversary, um, but that didn't happen. So we'll be doing that this year and, and we'll hopefully have a full report, not only of um, where they started here, but where they're at now and some of the successes they've had. I'm intrigued by your co-working space. You said you're full, but you have, um, you know, quarterly memberships available for people for co-working. Um, yeah. I know that for a lot of folks, you know, myself included, I've been relegated to working from home for much of the much of the last year. Um, <clears throat> what is that still available for people? Um, I've, I've seen success with co-working spaces in the past. I, I was not even aware that we had one locally. So is that yep. available? And what is absolutely. That 
Yeah, and that's a great question, Rex. So when I say we're full, what I meant by that is any of our dedicated office spaces. So those are folks that are, are full-time tenants, they have access to the building 24 seven and they have their own office or in the case of 40 Below Joe, their own manufacturing space and that sort of thing. But our co-working space, um, those folks can set up in any sort of open space here in the building. We do have some dedicated co-working space, but really they can be in the atrium, the meetup space. Um, so really, I'm not saying those memberships are unlimited, but um, it would take a lot for us to get become full as far as co-working memberships go because co-working members just come in and out and use the space when they need it. And as you said, it's a great option for those who need um, reliable internet access. I de don't think I mentioned that we have uh, unlimited coffee, so <laughs> that's good too. Um, and then again, just an, an innovative community, just folks to be around. So, and direct access, of course, to all of our business services. Well, that's fantastic. Thank you. So we would love to see you or at least come and, and uh, we would love to give you a tour. So. Okay. Anybody have any additional questions for Deb? All right. I'll go back to this. Thank you so much for joining us today, Deb. Um, Thank you. Was, Thanks for the I, opportunity. I, I learned a lot. Good. <laughs> It's, it's great. We're, we're trying to spread the word so we're no longer that best kept secret. <laughs> yeah. All right. So next week, we have Marcia Griffin, uh, Illinois Attorney, Attorney General Community Outreach Liaison to discuss identity theft and scams. Um, I'm, I'm sorry I'll be missing that one. I'm really looking forward to listening to the uh, or watching the YouTube video, but I will be out of, out of town for a training. Um, yet another sign we're getting somewhat back to normal. But, uh, and then we have uh, April 21st, Rebecca O'Neill of SIU Legal Clinics and April 28th, Sandra Langley of John A. Logan Literacy Program. So uh, stay tuned the next couple of weeks. Um, <clears throat> and uh, hopefully, hopefully we'll have some great presentations. And um, Deb, you are more than welcome to join us for any of these if you're interested in learning about in these and uh, the invitation is always open to to join our club so you've got some colleagues from SIU here in the club and uh, I think it was a fantastic presentation we'd love to have you on board. Thanks Rick. Uh, now it's time for the four-way test. Carl Flowers would you please lead us in the four-way test? Absolutely. Would you all join me in the four-way test of what we think, say, or do? One, is it the truth? Is it the truth? Two, is, is it, it fair, fair to all concerned? Concern? Or three, will build goodwill and better friendships? And four, will, will it be beneficial to all concerned? concerned? Thank you all for joining us today. And uh, hopefully, we, we did have a conversation with the school district. and. Uh, we'll bring that up at a future board meeting that we do have an opportunity to get back into the building here soon. So thank you all for joining us and we hope to see you again next week. Okay. Hey, thank hey, you. Bye-bye. Hey, Bye-bye. Rick. Yeah. Rick, hey, Rick, before you close out, could I uh, mention something I neglected to say that um, there is an urgent need for blood donations to the Red Cross. And um, I checked, I, I'm scheduled this evening to give at the Latter-day Saints Church between Carbondale and Murfreesboro. And there are still a number of um, open slots for um, people to, to register for donations either at the LDS Church or at the DeSoto Grade School. Awesome. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you for sharing that. Um, that was one of our projects earlier in the year, 100 Pints of Blood, and I know we surpassed that. Um, I had, uh, I was scheduled and had to cancel a donation because of uh, some other things going on. So I'll see if I can jump back into that. Thank you, Gail. Gail, I'll put that in the email as we send it out. So in a link to where people can go find a, a donation site. Yeah, thank you. There are also a number also next week if uh, this week's uh, schedules don't work out for folks. There are some already scheduled for next week too. Okay. Well, thank you all for joining us.
and have a great day. Thanks, everybody.